Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have another birthday card to share with you using the Flowers for Teddy digital stamp by Rochelle Amanoir. I die cut the printed image out using the A2 basic rectangles from Mama Elephant. Uh, this gives me that lovely stitching detail that you know that I adore. And I'm just masking off those edges to keep them white. Next I am going to create my background and this time I'm again doing a bit of shredding of paper and I'm going to use again that rougher edge to get me a corner on this panel with a pop of color. This time I'm using blues. Uh, the first and previous time that I did this kind of a background I used yellows uh, and I really really loved how it turned out and Right at that moment I knew that I was going to use this technique again and actually I did quite quickly. So today I am using Mermaid Lagoon, Peacock Feathers, Tumble Glass and Cracked Pistachio. And so I uh, just randomly teared uh, four pieces of paper. You can also just make sure that you have one piece with several edges that were torn. Uh, but I just took four pieces and then I wiggled it around a bit so that it would give me that lovely corner. Later on I will use this corner to add a sentiment on top and just let it pop uh, with that blue in the back. I wanted to start with the color in this corner to determine later on what I was going to use as combos for my Copic coloring. Well, since I use blues and you know me, keeping it simple, repeating colors, I decided to Use my teal blue combination for the dress of the little girl. So at this stage I was really really happy with the background. So then it was time to start coloring. Really simple coloring, you know me, using my Copic markers. If by any time you want a combination, there is always my blog post where I list each of the combinations for each part of the images. So let's do this. As you know me, I am starting with those areas that I find the hardest of all. At this time I'm starting with the hair, next I will do the skin. So for the hair I'm really letting myself be guided by the lines already drawn in by the illustrator Rochelle Anna Miller in this case. And I'm just working my way through my markers, my combination of three markers most of the time for hair, for any combination. Um, so I'm using E59, E57 and E33. And I'm doing a bit of flicking. In case you want to have really really thin flicks, the more you're holding your Copic marker vertically, the thinner it will be the result. So in this case I found it really nice looking and the hair I was really happy with it. Already from the first layer so I didn't want to touch it anymore sometimes if you add more and more layers and the paper gets more saturated it's really hard to get those three clients kind of hairstyle um, it sort of gets blurry uh, so I was really happy with it I stopped off the one normally I do two layers or more if needed but if you're happy with the result also just stop right there okay next I did the skin tone which is well, for me, I, I almost always use the same combination. It's E13, E11, E01 and E00. It's a really standard kind of color. I don't think it's too light and it's not necessarily too dark. It's just somewhere in between all of the skin tones and that's what I really like about this combination. Also this way, if I have my critters or... Um, just the bears that she's holding in a brown kind of combination it stands out enough because it's more towards the pinkish uh, color and then I can do all the brown combinations that I adore on my critters or the, the teddy bears or anything like that so in this case since the hair was already quite dark brown well it's sort of in between I decided to go for a really light bear which normally I tend to add a bit darker <laughs> browns towards um, but this time lighter, my favorite brown combination E33, E53, E51, it's a really soft brown and I just love it for that. So next I'm going to color the basket and therefore I'm using the same brown 
markers but I'm combining a bit from the hair as well as the bear so I'm using E57, E33 and E53 the two lightest markers from this combination you can find again for the bear and the two dark well the two darkest are also part of the hair combination so actually quite um, a limited amount of markers but three different combinations of browns I will later on also add some brown to the shoes, but there was still contemplating whether I was going for the teals all the way or not. So after the basket, I am continuing with the dress. Therefore, I'm using my favorite blue teal combination being BG49, 23 and 11. It's a combination that works really, really well. It's quite vibrant um, and from time to time, uh, just flicking works. Sometimes I need a bit of tip to tip depending on the day. <laughs> That I am coloring. I don't know why it sometimes turned out it turns out differently when it comes to the blend. Uh, but as long as it works out and I can use it, I'm really happy about that. So I'm working my way uh, through my marker combination from darkest to lightest. There are many ways to color with your alcohol markers. You do you. If you prefer doing it in another order then definitely do so as long as you're having fun and you like the end result that's all that matters for the socks or however you want to call it i call these socks i am using my two light lightest blue markers really simple and then i'm bringing back in that brown for the shoes I'm using E57, E33 and actually that is just enough for the size of these shoes. Um, you can add more markers if you want to. But I sort of, well, determine it on the size of um, these specific items that I'm coloring most often. For the flowers, I went for a really soft yellowish, orangish, orangish, orange, yellowish, orange kind of color because that blue was really going to stand out on my card as I also had in that corner uh, but this yellow really soft color really works well with that blue um, so I just work my way through the combination again really tiny area you can add two layers three if you want to but one for me was enough in this case There we go and then for the hat i didn't want to reuse um, the same browns um, otherwise if i wanted a really light hat i would have used the combination of the bear but since i decided to go with a really light bear i had to find another way to sort of let this hat um, represent like a really light color um, so i went for e41 e40 as i wanted this hat to appear a bit kind of wide I just did some flicking. I didn't color it completely with these E40s. Um, that was not my intention. So I just flicked it out into that white area of the head. And I think it sort of gave it the shadow that I needed without completely coloring it in. And then to add some tiny details, I'm just adding a bit of red to these hearts. If I would have colored them blue, I think that I might have added some blue hearts as well, but now since I had them in red, um, that just didn't work for me. Adding a bit of green here and there, and then I went for the grounding using the same combination as the head. I really wanted it to be soft, but still have a bit of grounding. So therefore, E41 and E40 really worked out well here. And then the coloring is done. So I could start playing with the ideas for the sentiment. I ended up using two dies. Uh, the Happy Birthday Words die and the Sending Hugs Word die from Hello Bluebird. And I used the birthday and the hugs. So I combined the two together. So I decided to first die cut both out of white cardstock. And I just added them on top of this panel. Um, in case the white was clear enough. I would have just left it, but since the background was quite, well, soft, the white wasn't standing out enough, so I'm just trying to get my, well, my liquid glue to work here, and then I'm going to add birthday hugs on top of that background. And then later on, I decided to add a bit of gold glitter cardstock on top, 
but it was already handy to have uh, these birthday hugs on top. It helped me with placement later on. So no biggie if a certain color isn't working as you want it to. It can just be a layer underneath and it will help you with the dimension. So here the hugs, um, I'm going to use that sort of template that I have from die cutting the hacks uh, because I really love the spacing. I often have this whenever there are some die cut words, sentiments or phrases made by a certain brand, in this case Hello Bluebird. I really love spacing or placement of a sentiment. So I tend to try to add it exactly as intended by the brand. Um, so therefore I'm quite often using that negative to help me inlay the letters and then have it exactly space, spaced as intended. So there we go, and I'm really sorry for the hair that is overhanging and, and caught in the video, but I just really needed to make sure that it was straight in there. And as you can see, the birthday might, might work, but the hack is really over lapping with the wide area a lot. If you want a really subtle sentiment, stop here. If you want the sentiment to be a bit more clear, um, you could go for uh, a colored cardstock that you used, a color that you used for the coloring of the image. Or, well, I think it's a safe way uh, to go with your sentiment is taking glitter cardstock. That's a lot of fun. And it's subtle, but not subtle at the same time. Um, it's really fun. So this one that I'm using is from Altenew Glitter Cardstock. It's the brushed gold uh, version because I think there are five or six colors in that pack. And I really, really love it for that. I can always just see and match a little bit, see what works, what doesn't. And it gives me quite a nice um, end result every time. So the birthday, the same. I'm just going to add a bit of that liquid glue on that white that I already added on top. And then I will just place that gold one straight on there. And this way I have a bit of dimension that I played with. At the same time the sentiment is way more visible now. So that I like. And then don't forget the diddle. Next, I'm going to add this panel on top of my card base and then this card will actually be finished. It's a really simple idea and I really love to tear the paper and then use that rougher edge. I think it gives something. You can also mask off your image and go a bit further, of course, with that kind of background. Uh, but just to avoid masking every time, I went for a corner again. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, you can always give it a thumbs up. I would truly appreciate it. I want to thank you all for stopping by. Uh, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. And I'll be back soon with some new crafty inspiration. Bye!